And I have a text, and it is from, because I won't take a religious text from a known extremist or fanatic, it's from Cardinal Newman, uh, recently by Mr. Blair's in, uh, urging, uh, beatified and on his way to canonization, a man whose apologia uh, made many Anglicans reconsider their fealty and made many people join the Roman Catholic Church. He's considered, I think rightly, a, a great Christian thinker. My text from the Apologia. The Catholic Church, said, uh, said Newman, holds it better for the sun and moon to drop from heaven, for the earth to fail, and for all the many millions on it to die in extremest agony than that one soul, I will not say will be lost, but should commit one venial sin, should tell one willful untruth, or should steal one farthing without excuse. You'll have to say it's beautifully phrased, ladies and gentlemen. But to me, and here's my proposition, what we have here, and picked from no mean source, is a distillation of precisely what is twisted and immoral in the faith mentality. It's essential fanaticism, it's consideration of the human being as raw material, and it's fantasy of purity. Once you assume a creator and a plan, it makes us objects in a cruel experiment whereby we are created sick and commanded to be well. I'll repeat that. Created sick and then ordered to be well. And over us to supervise this is installed a celestial dictatorship, a kind of divine North Korea. <laughs> Greedy. Exigent, exigent, I would say more than exigent, greedy for uncritical praise from dawn till dusk and swift to punish the original sins with which it so tenderly gifted us in the very first place. <laughs> However, let, 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 let no one say there's no cure. Salvation is offered. Redemption, indeed, is promised at the low price of the surrender of your critical faculties. <laughs> Religion, it might be said, uh, must be said, uh, would have to admit, makes extraordinary claims, but though I would maintain that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, rather daringly provides not even ordinary evidence for its extraordinary supernatural claims. Therefore, we might begin by asking, and I'm asking my opponent as well as you when you consider your voting. Is it good for the world to appeal to our credulity and not to our skepticism? Is it good for the world to worship a deity that takes sides in wars and human affairs? To appeal to our fear and to our guilt, is it good for the world? To our terror, our terror of death, is it good to appeal? To preach guilt and shame about the sexual act and the sexual relationship, is this good for the world? And asking yourself, the while, are these really religious responsibilities, as I maintain they are? To terrify children with the image of hell and eternal punishment, not just of themselves, but of their parents and those they love. Perhaps worst of all, to consider women an inferior creation. Is that good for the world? And can you name me a religion that has not done that? To insist that we are created and not evolved in the face of all the evidence. To say that certain books of legend and myth, man-made and primitive, are revealed, not man-made code. Religion forces nice people to do unkind things, and also makes intelligent people say stupid things. Handed a small baby for the first time, is it your first reaction to think, beautiful, almost perfect, now please hand me the sharp stone for its genitalia, that I may do the work of the Lord. No. <laughs> It is, uh, as, the great, um, as the great physicist Steven Weinberg has very aptly put it, in the ordinary moral universe, the good will do the best they can, the worst will do the worst they can, but if you want to make good people do wicked things, you'll need religion. <laughs> now, I've got now one minute and 57 seconds to say why I think this is very self-evident in our material world. Let me ask Tony again, because he's here, um, and because the... The place where he is seeking peace is the birthplace of monotheism. So you might think it was unusually filled with refulgence and love and peace. Everyone in the uh, civilized world has roughly agreed, including the majority of Arabs and Jews, 
and the international community that there should be enough room for two states for two peoples in the same land. I think we have a rough agreement on that. Why can't we get it? The UN can't get it. The US can't get it. The Quartet can't get it. The PLO can't get it. The Israeli Parliament can't get it. Why can't they get it? Because the parties of God have a veto on it, and everybody knows that this is true. Because of the divine promises made about this territory, there will never be peace, there will never be compromise, there will instead be misery, shame, and tyranny, and people will kill each other's children for ancient books and caves and relics. And who is going to say that this is good for the world? And that's just the, argument, the example nearest to hand. Have you looked lately at the possibility that we used to discuss as children in fear? What will happen when, when messianic fanatics get hold of an apocalyptic weapon? Well, we're about to find that out as we watch the Islamic Republic of Iran and its party of God allies uh, make a dress rehearsal for precisely this. Have you looked lately at the revival of Tsarism in Putin's Russia where the black-cowled, black-coated leadership of Russian orthodoxy is draped over an increasingly xenophobic, tyrannical, expansionist, and aggressive uh, regime. Have you looked lately at the teaching in Africa and the consequences of it of a church that says, AIDS may be wicked, but not as wicked as condoms? That's exactly no seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. I've done my best. Believe me, I have more. Um, LAUGHTER